Hi everyone, this is Terry. Many of you know that I lost my son in early October. The world just lost another amazing soul that had a huge personal impact on my life. I wanted to do a tribute to her, tell you how she affected me personally, and at the end, I'm going to tell you how she said goodbye on her way out of this world. Many of you know Margaret Tufeau as a blues legend in the Portland, Oregon area, in San Francisco, in the Pacific Northwest. Ron Steen even called Margot blues royalty. I first met Margot in 2006. There was just an instant connection. You know when you meet someone and there's just chemistry and you know it? Margot and I had that. But we were never really close. We were, we were coming, you know, we'd pass each other in various circles. That all took a turn in April of either 2018 or 2019 when I went to see her at one of her gigs. I had not seen her face to face probably in several years. She was fantastic. And that chemistry we had was still there. So the day after that gig, we got in contact with each other and decided, you know, let's have lunch. Let's coffee, you know, let's catch up. What the heck's been going on? That was a fateful day in my life and in Margot's. You know when you have friends that you haven't seen in 20 years and you're together and it's like you never, you never let off? That's the way it was with Margot and me, although it was much more strong. There was much more of a connection there. Our friendship just grew. We had so much fun. Then, I can't remember the month, but I had been trying to get in touch with Margot all day. She was texting me back, but the texts were really strange, and I wasn't understanding what was happening. And I messaged her again that evening, and I said, if you don't call me back, I'm going to send the police over on a welfare check, which I did. I didn't hear anything from her. By the time I got there, the ambulance was leaving. I was following the ambulance to the hospital. We got there. They did all of their stuff. I was with Margot. The doctor came in and said she was in sepsis. And had she, had it been another hour, she would not have lived. And that's pretty heavy. I mean, you call and you're responsible for getting someone to the hospital. Our friendship just, just deepened. Because had I not made that phone call, Margot might not have made it then. And I'm not taking any kudos, anything for that. It's just sort of an underlying understanding of how our relationship developed and how it grew even more strong than it was. Margot was in the hospital at that time for, you know, I can't even remember because she was in the hospital, I was in the hospital, she was in the hospital, I was in the hospital. We went through so much, but we made it a lot of fun. She was in the hospital for quite some time. I would go home at night, or I would go to her house at night and I would take care of her cat, and then I was back at the hospital the next morning. And when Margo was discharged, finally, here is the picture of us escaping the hospital. We were finally discharged. I stayed with her for, I can't remember how long, giving her IV infusions, like every four to six hours. That lasted about four to six weeks. And our relationship just grew. We had so much in common and we had so many differences. One thing, you know, before I get into how Margot came and said goodbye to me, I wanna say Margot had an impact on everyone she met. People looked up to her. Her voice was incredible. Her style was unique. She was born an entertainer. She was born to sing the blues. She and I, oh my gosh, she gave me things that I had never had. I, as many of you, am a very broken person. I have so many cracks and so many holes and so many flaws. Margot filled those for me. And she really gave me something 
no one in my life has been able to give me. And that was knowing she had my back 100% of the time. And she made me feel whole. She found the things that were lacking in me and she filled those gaps. She allowed me to truly be myself. And you can see it in our videos. We had such a good time. We were ourselves. Then I started to get pretty sick and have some problems with my heart, have some problems with vertigo, and I was unable to navigate my house. I have a big house, a lot of stairs. I couldn't navigate my house, and so I ended up staying at Margot's. She had a one-level home. And we had more fun. We, you know, we played games. We watched Jeopardy. We, Margot took me out. She, she loved Mercedes, just like I love Mercedes. And she loved convertibles. So she had this beautiful black Mercedes convertible. We would get in that and ride around Portland and she would take me to photograph. Many of you know that I am a photographer and that is one of my greatest passions. Margot took me to some of the most awesome places. And Margot herself was an excellent subject. The way her house was situated, the light would come in just right and it would frame her perfectly in capturing her. Those photos, I think, are some of my best portraits. It was a combination of Margot's character, her years, the way the light hit her, and as well when she was performing. I got great shots of her performing, but most of my photos of Margot are candids. And it was just, I always had my camera, the light was perfect, and I would just snap the shot. Margo and I had a plan. She joined me on my YouTube channel and we were going down the road of lipstick and butch wax. In our videos, you could see the chemistry we had. It was given, give and take, give and take, back and forth, back and forth. And it was real, it was instant, and it, Margo held the bar. She still holds the bar. Unfortunately, Margo and I had a falling out about a year ago and we haven't spoken. In the last few months, I've been contemplating starting a podcast, and I was trying to think of who I had really good chemistry with, and it was Margo. And I kept thinking, okay, how do I mend this? How do I mend ways so we can get together and work together? Because really, we were really, we were really good as a team. We were great as a team. I just, I kept, you know, trying to think of ways, and we hadn't been in touch, and then, I, can't, I don't really know the time frame because time has been very surreal in this pandemic and since my son died, time just is blurring in to time. But I would say probably a good six weeks before the world lost Margot Tufo, I started having trouble sleeping. I started having very scary, very vivid dreams that involved Margot, and they were so disturbing that I couldn't sleep. You know, I even talked to my therapist about this and said, you know, I didn't tell them, I didn't tell anyone what the topic of the dreams were, but I just, I couldn't sleep. I dreaded going to sleep. And I'm, I was still trying to, Margot and I were both deeply, deeply hurt when our relationship parted ways. We were both devastated. After having trouble sleeping, I was up here filming the day before Margo died. I woke up, I could hear this cat in distress, and it sounded like it was in my room and it was stuck. Wherever this cat was, it was not happy, it was very upset, and it had a very, very haunting meow, a very deep meow, and it sounded to me like Margo's cat. Lucky. We have a ghost cat around here. A couple of days ago, I started hearing it. I thought it was one of my daughter's cats, and it was in distress. It was just really like this low meow, 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 and I, I heard it scratching. I called all the neighbors because I'm thinking maybe one of their cats is lost and, you know, stuck in my garage, which I looked out there too, and there wasn't a cat. But I kept hearing this like eerie, scary cat and scratching. Well, there's no way Lucky would be over here. I searched every room. All through the day, I heard this cat, and I was hearing this cat crying this just horrendously 
heartbreaking yowl. And my daughter even heard it. Could not figure out where this cat was coming from. And I heard it in various places in my house. It really was freaking me out. And I had Lucky on my mind, so I had Margo on my mind because this cat sounded just like Lucky. The next day, I came up to film Vlogmas. I hadn't checked my messages in several weeks because I was just overwhelmed with a lot of things. So I didn't know that Margo had been admitted to hospice. A lot of people were letting me know. I had no idea. And I'm trying to film whatever day Vlogmas that was. And there's a point in the video that I got up, and I'm gonna insert that here in a minute. I got up and walked downstairs to get something. I have never been afraid in my house of anything spiritual or of a spiritual nature. As I started going down the steps, I started feeling more and more of a presence. When I got down to the end of the steps, I could see something out of my, the side of my left eye. And I looked over and what I saw made me scream. And you can hear that on the tape, the footage that I'm going to put in here. <coughs> Did you guys hear me scream while I was gone? I'm talking about Rylan and Shane's cat, Cheeto. And I thought it was like a spirit cat. And then the weird spirit cat in my house that I can't find, but I can hear it. I just went downstairs and when I got to the bottom, Step, left into the theater. So I walked down in my peripheral vision, I saw a person standing there and I turned and looked and I saw them and they vanished. Came up in front of her face like she was touching her mouth and then her hand extended toward me like she would be blowing a kiss. I was freaked out. I had no idea what it was. I, my spirit knew it was Margo, like I said, but in my mind, I, I wasn't connecting the two because if you knew Margo Tufo, you know Margo has gone through more than most of us have in a lifetime. Margo has overcome things that most people would run screaming from. There was no way this powerhouse of a person, this legend, this blues icon could be gone. I didn't comprehend it. The next morning, I opened up my Facebook and I thought, you know, I'm gonna check my messages. I had quite a few messages in there informing me that Margo was in hospice. My heart sunk. Then I opened up my Facebook and I have to say, what I saw devastated me more than almost anything I can recall. I saw that Margo had died the day before, the day when I filmed the video, the day when I saw her in my living room. Two days after, I heard what I now believe to be lucky. At the time, it sounded like lucky. And you know what? I had a rough two days. Margo was such a force in my life. I learned so many things from Margo about myself, about her, about the world, about interactions. She gave me confidence. She allowed me to be in situations where I had to rely on myself. She got me to believe in myself. She made me feel whole. She made me feel accepted. And when I heard about her death, I immediately got a hold of some friends and said, what happened? What happened to Margo? They let me know. And I think I cried for three or four days, pretty much nonstop. After seeing Margo here, I, ha I didn't feel that presence again. And I cried for probably three or four days. And I, I considered putting in an emergency call to my therapist. And I, th you know, I thought, no, Terry, just, just kind of chill out and try to process this. And so I did. And I put a lot of pictures up on Facebook and Instagram of me and Margo and our time together because it was really one of the best times in my life. And after about three days of intense gut-wrenching mourning and grief, I had a, a really sudden change. I was peaceful. I was calm. Margo wasn't suffering from the problems that she had been suffering from. And then there was a fact that I know without a doubt before she left this world, Margo came by to see me and to tell me she loved me. And that fence was mended. It was one of the most precious gifts I've ever received. And I have to thank Margo for that. I'm gonna put a link to our playlist in the description. You know, look through some of those videos. You'll see the chemistry she and I shared. And Margo shared chemistry with everyone, but our, our sparks were really special. You can see it in our photographs. You can see it. We just, there was just something about us as a team that could conquer the world if we had put our minds to it. I feel truly blessed to have had Margo in my life, not only as a performer that I would watch, sing, 
beautifully, but as one of or as the closest friend I have ever had in my life. I will always be thankful for that. Feel free. Did you know Margo? Leave a comment. Let me know. But from me to you, Margo, I loved you then. I love you now. I will love you always. I hope you fly free and you're at the biggest blues jam in the universe. Thank you for giving me the privilege and honor to call you my friend and my partner. I love you.